Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the next talk uh, given by Ian and Sean about uh, uh, Git Deb Rebase, a new tool for Debian packaging. Thank you. Uh, hello. So, Sean Witten and I are here to present a new Git workflow tool for Deb Debian packaging. Uh, but first, before I tell you about it, I need to show you where it fits into the ecosystem of Debian package management software. Uh, on this slide, uh, we have you, the maintainer, on the left-hand side, just well off the left of the slide, and on the right, we have the Debian repositories. Um, the slides will be online. Uh, you don't need to photograph them. Uh, you may have heard me um, plugging dgit once or twice. Uh, you should all use dgit. Uh, dgit publishes your Git history, so Debian's users can use it. Uh, but that's not actually what I'm here to talk about today. Um, Git Debian base does not need dgit, and dgit does not need Git Debris base. Git Debris base is an, al an alternative to GBPPQ and to Git DPM and to other tools in the same kind of area like Git PKG. Um, and of course, it's an alternative to using raw quilt. Uh, Git Debris base is a tool to help you manage your Git branch containing the Debian version of the package you maintain. Uh, Git Debris Base helps you maintain a useful Git branch with the contents you need for building and uploading. Uh, Git Debris Base is mostly concerned with maintaining your Debian Delta, Debian Delta queue. That is the changes you make for Debian to the upstream parts of the package. Uh, other tools tend to call this your quilt patch series. Uh, but with Git Debris Base, there is no quilt and you don't work with patches. Uh, instead, there is a series of commits, so we prefer the term Delta Q. Git Debris Base is primarily intended for Debian package maintainers, um, although you could use it outside or alongside Debian. Uh, it does not deal with building at all. You use whatever existing build tools you like. Uh, nor does Git Debris Base deal with source packages or rig turbals. Does not do uploads. Of course, when you actually upload to Debian, you need to produce a source package. Getting a source package is, of course, as easy or easier than uh, with other workflows. Usually it is done automatically for you by dgit push source. Uh, so usually you don't need to concern yourself with .dse source packages even when uploading to Debian. Of course, you can share your Git branch on a service like Salsa without building or uploading. Uh, then you don't need to deal with source packages either. Uh, Git Debris Base offers a standard Git rebase workflow where you edit the whole of the source code for your package, including your changes to upstream files and your changes to packaging, including your changes, sorry, uh, you, the source code for your package, including your changes to upstream files and your changes to packaging all together. Uh, the experience is very like uh, using a Git, plain Git rebase to edit a topic branch. Delta Q editing, that is, Editing the upstream parts of your uh, package can be done at any time, interleaved with packaging work. As far as I know, there are no other tools that offer these features. Um, both GBPPQ and Git DPM require you to switch to a separate view to edit the Delta queue. Um, some tools have a specific function for Git cherry pick, um, but with none of them can you just use plain Git cherry pick or Git AM onto your usual branch at any time. With Git Debris Base, you can just edit the code and commit it with Git in the completely usual way. Specifically, at any point, you make, make commits to upstream files and commits to packaging in any order. So you can just cherry pick from upstream. You may make fix up commits and use the Git Rebase auto squash syntax to have them automatically folded in by the next rebase. If you wish, you may make mixed commits containing both changes to upstream files and changes to packaging files. Of course, you can always directly edit the source if you use a plain git merge workflow and non-quilt source packages. For example, as described in the dgit main debris base, sorry, dgit main merge tutorial man page. Um, but that does not maintain the Debian delta as a broken down linear series of changes. And in the source package, such a merge-based workflow squashes all the changes into a single Debian changes patch. 
So supporting, maintaining a delta Q, that is, a linear series of changes, is what Git Debris Base is for. Also, unlike Git DPM and some other tools, Git Debris Base has no entry metadata, so it can't get out of date or desynchronized or need any manual changing or fix up. As I said, unlike GBPPQ and Git DPM, there is no need to ever switch branches. Git Debris Base only uses one branch to handle all your Debian work. Of course, usually you will have an upstream remote tracking branch um, as well. So if you are working in multiple Debian releases, backports for example, uh, you'll have branches for those. But it's only one branch for each line of Debian development and no temporary branches or alternative views. With Git Debris Base, you can always immediately build binaries out of your working tree with dpkg build package or whatever other build tool you prefer. And your working tree is never made dirty by Git Debris Base or any of the other tooling. Because your working tree always has the delta Q applied, it is never dirty by patch application. Because there is no metadata, you can never get a metadata conflict. Because Git Debris Base treats the quilt patches in Debian patches as an output, and handles them entirely automatically, your tree is never dirtied by the generation of patches. And you never need to read diffs of diffs. And the final part of my plug, uh, with git debris base, uh, git blame and git log on a file work entirely properly. For example, if you do git log on a file from upstream, which is changed in the Debian delta Q, git log will show the Debian Delta Q commits preceded by the upstream history. We'll show you an example of this in the demo. If you run git blame, you will see a correct indication of which upstream and or Delta Q commits introduced each line. Or for a file in the Debian directory, you will see a correct reporting of which commits in the package's packaging history introduced each line. With git debris base, you never need to use the quilt program. You can mostly ignore 3.0 quilt source format. Not having to learn about 3.0 source format is really good for newbies, uh, particularly for people from other software development communities who don't know about Debian, but usually do know Git. Unfortunately, it's not possible to paper over the cracks completely. Um, you will still get trouble if you make changes in Git which 3.0 quilt cannot represent. Um, hopefully that's not too often. Uh, on the other hand, when you use Git Debris, Git Debris Base with 3.0 Quilt, the generated 3.0 Quilt source package is perfectly pretty, with your Delta Q commits converted nicely into patches, just as other people consuming DSCs have come to expect. And finally, of course, Git Debris Base is compatible with DGIT. Uh, you do not need to pass any Quilt mode option to DGIT, and you can always upload right away. All necessary bureaucracy is done automatically when you say dget push source. So that concludes uh, the marketing spiel. I'm going to give you a bit more detail uh, about how it works, um, and Sean will be doing a demo later. There are some important details I'm going to be glossing over. Uh, so if you actually want to know what's going on, uh, please read the uh, reference documentation, particularly the section five man page. Everything is fully and formally defined there. So this slide shows a likely situation, um, which you might find in the middle of an editing se session. Uh, there's a lot of stuff off to the left-hand side, um, which we, I've, I've left, that off so we've got space to, to see what happens when you uh, do some editing. The horizontal part near the bottom here is the, called the breakwater. Uh, this branch contains unpatched upstream source code plus the Debian packaging in the Debian subdirectory. It does not contain any representation of the Debian delta Q. So it doesn't contain any of your commits to upstream files and it doesn't contain anything in Debian patches. In the example, uh, commits A and B are packaging work. The Debian Delta Q sits on top of that. In this example, there are two Debian Delta Q commits. Uh, I've called them one and two, because that fits nicely on the diagram. Uh, these are commits touching upstream files. In the diagram, your current head, your local master branch, is at commit two. 
So your tree contains the patched source code plus the packaging, i.e. it is your actual patched source package. You could build it with dpkg build package dash uc dash b to produce binaries for testing. You can get grep for things and be told where they are, even if they're in the upstream source files but introduced by your delta queue. You can get log dash capital G for things to be told where they came from and shown the relevant commit, whether that's upstream or one of yours. Okay then, suppose you want to make a change which edits upstream files and files in the Debian directory. A common example might be a change which edits some upstream file but also adds a change log entry. I'm calling this C3. The reason for this name will be clearer in a moment. Uh, now, with this commit, your tree is, of course, still fine. You can build and test it right away. But suppose you want to tidy things up. Um, in particular, you might want the new upstream change to come before patch 2. Um, perhaps just because it's tidier that way, or perhaps because you're about to change um, uh, commit to, to in, in some way that makes it depend on your new upstream changes in, in commit C3. Uh, so in order to rebase and reorder the patches, you would run git deb rebase dash i, which is very like git rebase dash i. You get the standard git rebase to-do list editor. And you see in it what looks like commit C3. And as you can see here in the diagram, I've already reordered that to come before change two. So you say, okay, go, and assuming there are no conflicts, what you end up with looks like this. So you can see that commit C3 has been split into two commits. C prime, which contains the changelog change, and three prime, which contains the upstream change. The upstream change is now in the delta queue in its proper place. C prime, the packaging part of your new commit, has been pushed into the breakwater. This is the general scheme of things. Uh, we have a fast forwarding breakwater containing packaging and unchanged upstream files. It doesn't have a ref to itself. Instead, it is contained within your master branch, and each time you get debris base, the rebase starts on the breakwater. So what about a new upstream version? To rebase onto a new upstream version, you run git debris base new upstream. Git debris base expects the upstream code in the form of a git commit, of course. Actually, by default, it hopes to find a tag named after the upstream version number. Uh, but you can tell it explicitly if that's not right. Git debris base arranges to include the new upstream source into the breakwater and rebases your delta queue onto that. So there are new commits here on the breakwater. Um, firstly, the at sign is a special merge um, that folds the new upstream source code unchanged into your breakwater branch. This special merge is called an anchor merge. The most recent anchor merge is the backstop for rebase processing by git debris base. The second commit is simply adding a changelog entry for you. That's done automatically. Um, uh, sorry, I've lost my place. Uh, yes, right. So having provided the new base, um, which is this commit D here, um, it, it uses git, git debris base, uses git rebase dash dash onto to rebase the delta Q onto the new breakwater. If you didn't ask for an interactive rebase and there are no merge conflicts, that's it. You now have the new upstream code with your rebase delta Q. Of course, if you're going to upload to the Debian archive, you'll also have to make an arig table of the new upstream. Um, if you're using the workflow I've been describing so far, uh, that's generally just a single call to git deb arig. So indeed, let's consider an upload to Debian. And let's imagine you made or obtained a suitable arig table. There's a certain amount of bureaucracy to be done. Uh, in the usual case of an upload with dgit, this is all done for you automatically, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, but it's useful to understand what's going on, so I'm going to 
uh, go through it a bit. Um, firstly, you're going to publish your history. Um, so your history has to be made fast forward from your previous version of the package. To achieve this, uh, Git, Git Debrabase will make a pseudo merge. A pseudo merge is a merge commit which takes its contents from only one of its parents. Uh, you would make one by hand with git merge dash s hours. Uh, if you wanted to make your head fast forward and know that all the wanted changes from the other branch are included, that's the command you would use. Um, but generally, you don't need to do that manually. In this example, git debris had recorded the previous branch state so that it can make the right pseudo merge. Your new branch is derived from the previous branch you had, so it's right to declare that it's fast forwarding. That doesn't lose any changes. The branch with the pseudo merge is suitable for pushing to any Git server. You could push to Salsa, say. Uh, secondly, uh, when you upload a 3.0 quilt package, the contents of Debian packages need to be right. Sorry, Debian patches needs to be right. Um, again, that is taken care of automatically. Uh, commit is made, adding a patch representation of the delta Q to Debian patches. You can ignore these auto-generated commits. After uploading, you'll want to push your branch to Salsa if you have a team repository there. That makes sure that all the views of your package are up to date so that other members of your team won't accidentally base their work on an old version. You can just push a git debris erase branch, which has had the pseudo merge made, called a stitched branch, with git push. It's a normal fast forwarding git branch. If you want to push without uploading, that's fine too. Uh, git debris base stitch will just make the pseudo merge for you, giving you a fast forwarding branch suitable pushing to Salsa or wherever. After upload, next time you come to the package, you can work directly by adding commits on master. If you want to rebase, or you just want to tidy the branch up, you can run git debris base. It strips off the bureaucracy commits. These remain published, of course, but they are removed from your own master branch. If you made any commits on top of the pseudo merge, those aren't in my example here, um, or maybe pulled such commits from Salsa or wherever, it folds those back into the breakwater and the delta queue. So once again, you have a nice delta queue to edit. Git debris base makes a note of where you were previously so that next time you want to push or upload, it can stitch the history back in with a new pseudo merge. Uh, at the start of this walkthrough, that ref was indeed present, the FFQ prev master ref you see at the top right of the slide, uh, and I kind of glossed over that. Okay, so let us think about the new upstream. What if one of your delta Q commits doesn't apply um, during the upstream rebase? Um, so, i.e., the change you made doesn't apply to the new upstream source code. That may be a bit small. That's a, like a rebase conflict output from, from Git. Uh, so, uh, Git rebase users will have seen this kind of output before. Uh, it stops at the first commit, which can't be applied in the new context, and it asks you for help. Uh, this looks quite bad. Um, of course, it's, it's not good. Uh, but this is an irreducible aspect of maintaining a delta Q on, on top of a moving target. Sometimes you'll need to fix up conflicts. At least with Git Debris Base, you get the right tools to help you fix it up. Uh, some of the other workflows can involve trying to reserve mon merge conflicts during quilt apply or fix up conflicts in diffs. Uh, that's much less fun. Um, also, Git Debris Base new upstream is quite low commitment. Imagine, like on the diagram here, Git Debris Base has applied commit one and stopped because it can't apply commit three prime. Now, if you decide this is too difficult to deal with today, you can just say git rebase dash dash abort and everything gets put back. The auto generated special breakwater merge and the change log entry are discarded leaving you just where you were before. You've wasted no effort because everything you're throwing away was auto-generated. There's one caveat I should mention. Um, right now, if two Git Debris-based branches diverge uh, because different people 
edit them simultaneously. It is not trivial to merge them again. The data model I'm describing does not currently allow general merge commits. Um, if git debris encounters a normal git merge, um, it will stop and fail. In, and in the general case, sorting out such a merge is not a trivial problem. Uh, GBPPQ sometimes handles this kind of situation by expecting you to merge the actual patches, i.e. you can end up resolving merge conflicts in diffs. Uh, other tools don't always handle this well either. Uh, I have some ideas about how to do better at this, so watch this space. Uh, but for now, you, you, your team should coordinate uh, to avoid creating diverging Git debris base branches. Uh, Git debris base will help you with that by often spotting when divergence is about to occur and warning you about it. So that's enough explanation. Um, I think it's time for our demo now. So, Sean, if you're ready. Yes. Right. Is it, can you see Git K? Yes, yes, it's there. Okay, so this is a package of mine uh, called Helm, which is an Emacs add-on. And I recently switched it to use Git dev rebase. Uh, so let me just walk you through some of the commits that are here at the top of the branch. Here is where I merged uh, with Git dev rebase new, uh, new upstream. I imported version 2.9.7. And then if we work our way up from there, we have commits like this one, which are delta Q commits. So if I just pull that up, which just adds a file to the upstream source called changelog. Uh, and then we have, that's another, here we have another delta Q commit, which uh, hacks the upstream's readme file to make it a bit shorter. Uh, another delta Q commit, which messes around with a shell script. Then we have a packaging commit. So this one is just touching Debian changelog, as you can see here. Uh, we have uh, a mixed commit, which is touching .gitignore, which is an upstream file, and the Debian changelog. And then an auto-generated commit, which is, which is the, uh, one of the hexagonal commits made by git deb rebase, generating deep patches. And then these three commits at the top, well, sorry, that's just a packaging commit. These two commits at the top are the pseudo merge. So making this branch fast forward from my previous upload. Uh, now, one thing that's a bit unusual about this example is that like, this is all mixed together. And in the previous slides, you saw that the delta Q was always at the tip of the branch. That's just because I didn't deb rebase before I uploaded. Um, and, but that's actually completely fine because I'm going to do some editing now and deb rebase will sort it all out and you'll see that happen. Okay. Two other things to show before I start editing. Let me uh, count the number of patches. So there's a, that's kind of a hairy git log command. All it's saying is, show me all the commits not touching Debian since 2.9.7. And you can see there's four of them. So right now we have these four commits. And uh, let, one more thing we wanted to show you was a git log on a particular file. So this is an Emacs git thing, but it's just running git log. Don't, um, don't be put off. Here is the git log for the file readme.md. You can see all of the upstream commits and my little delta Q patch on the top, which apparently I made three years ago. Yes, this is an old package. Uh, and that like, just works. You just have the log showing the upstream commits and the delta Q commits. Okay, so let's do some editing now that we've seen that. So remember, right now we have four uh, Delta Q commits. I'm going to add a fifth commit. To save time, I actually have this in a stash. So I'm just going to pop that stash here. Uh, and so now I've made a change to the change log and to an upstream file. Let me show you that with git diff. So I added a comment uh, to the upstream source, and I added a Debian change log entry saying that I did that. And uh, let's just go ahead and commit that ordinary way to use Git. Uh, so yes, be more excited about Helm. All right, there we go. That's committed. And let's take a look at what that looks like over in Git K. So we now have this new mix commit at the top of the branch. 
So as I mentioned earlier, this is a mess, right? We have these mixed commits, we have these auto-generated commits, we have these uh, packaging commits and um, uh, Delta Q commits interleaved, but Git rebase can just fix that for us. So back in the shell, git deb rebase dash i. And we end up in a git, a git interactive rebase edit session. So uh, let's suppose that this new commit, the last line, let's suppose that that needs to come second in the delta q for reasons unstated. Well, that's easy. We'll just move it up just like a normal git rebase. Commit the rebase. OK, off it goes. We've successfully rebased. All right, what does that look like? Well, let's refresh git k. OK, so now we have something that looks a lot more palatable. So let me run through these briefly. Uh, we, so we now have five commits in the delta q. We had four before. We now have a new one. And here they are. They start here. Uh, yes, they do. So we have, oh no, we don't. They start here. So here is the first delta q commit. Uh, it adds the change log like before. Here's my new commit that we just added. You can see it only touches the upstream source now. The change log bit has been split off into its own commit. And then we have these ones, these old delta q commits at the top. And you can see that all of the packaging commits come before the delta q. So here is the other half of the new commit touching Debian change log and get dev rebase, split it out, and reordered it perfectly nicely. And also note that the auto-generated Debian patches commit has disappeared, because it's auto-generated. We don't need it while we're editing, so it gets got rid of. OK, uh, so that's actually it. If we wanted to upload this change now, I could just type dgit push source, and it would go to the archive. It's as simple as I literally do that right now. But I'm not going to, because I'm a responsible maintainer. Um, uh, but suppose that we wanted to push to Salsa. Uh, this, as it stands, is not a fast forward of what's on Salsa, because it's uh, been deb rebased. But there's a command to fix that. git deb rebase conclude, which says, stitch me back so I am pushable. Let me run that. And then I have to restart git k. I won't explain why, uh, but in order to make it something that makes sense. So now we have exactly what we had at the previous view. Those eight commits are still there, and one commit at the top to pseudo merge it, so it's pushable. And it's as simple as that. Uh, that's everything that I wanted to show. Any, anything else you want, you want to say no, about I this? No, I think that's everything. OK, great. Thank you. Of course. Right, I just need to plug all these widgets back in. OK, so thank you for the demo. I'm glad that came off nicely. Um, I think we've got the slide on again. Right, um, so uh, just like wrapping up, uh, Git debris base is available in testing and stretch back ports and is in good shape. Um, the, since early versions, it's been battle tested to help with security updates to the Debian Zen packages, uh, which are quite an exciting test case uh, with a lot of patches and a, a lot of difficult stuff to do. Uh, and the documentation is comprehensive. Uh, so no doubt the user interface and documentation will improve and new features will be added and bugs will be fixed. Um, and indeed, you'll see we're referring you to the version of the tutorial man page from Unstable. Um, that's because we've just done some documentation updates. But you can start using Git database from stretch back ports or testing or unstable right away. Uh, the best starting point is probably the tutorial man page, dgit main to debris base, uh, which is in the dgit package. Um, and uh, if you want more information or you need help or you're just curious, uh, we're holding a workshop uh, tomorrow morning. I think that's tomorrow. Yeah. Um, where anyone is invited to come and help, get help um, with Git Debris Base and also with DGIT if you've got questions using DGIT. Um, so if your questions don't get answered in a moment um, or you want us to like workshop your problem, uh, do drop in. It's a drop-in session. 
Um, and also, of course, I should refer to the reference documentation. Uh, Git Debris Base 5 has the data model and all the terminological definitions, and Git Debris Base 1 is the command line reference. Uh, but you don't want to start there unless you really like reference manuals. You probably want to read the workflow tutorial um, or come to the workshop. So thank you all for coming, and I think we've got a reasonable amount of time for questions. Anyone? You want to come down and use the mic, please? I think that's much easier for the video team. Uh, you can come, if you've got a question, you can come down and stand by the mic in advance. That might save a bit of time. Um, the one thing you mentioned for, uh, somewhere in the middle is that when you have a team and diverging commits, uh, that is not dealt with the tool, right? Right, that's not, br the, the, the approach that happens right now is not brilliant. Usually, uh, unless, to, to, unless both of you have been editing the delta queue separately, you can normally deal with this by using a manual git rebase to rebase one of the sets of changes on top of the other. Um, and that avoids producing a merge commit. So if you, you can do also do often git pull dash dash rebase will often do that for you. Um, so it's, it's, not completely, it's not completely unworkable, it's just not ideal. Do you plan to add better support for this? I mean, Git is distributed, so I mean, right, right, absolutely, if you absolutely. Cut this out. I mean, I'm often right. on the train and working. I cannot do permanently push and pull. Right, and so right, on. absolutely, absolutely. So you can certainly do that, right? If you, if you're working on a train like that, and so it depends kind of what kind of editing you're doing. If what you're doing is you're like working on the packaging and adding new commits on top. That's really easy because you can just rebase those patches on, you know, you can git pull dash dash rebase and then you don't make a merge commit and it's all completely fine. Um, but if you um, edit the delta queue. Um, Non-additively. Non-additively, right? If you, if you kind of reorganize the delta queue commits or drop patches or stuff or, re or change the commit messages or something like that and then somebody else also does that, uh, right now there are no tools I think that will, that will sort that out for you in a reasonable way. Um, I have some theories about how to improve this. Um, I think probably what I'm going to do is add code to deal with some of the easier cases and make that a bit smoother so that in easy cases the merge will be fixed up for you. Um, and the hard cases you might very well still get like error messages and then, then you'll be left having to do it yourself. But one thing you can do is you can check out both git debris, but you can check out both parents of the merge and run git debris base on them separately um, and to, to get like, get everything nice. Some, something that you can look at. Something that you can look about. at and then you can reason about and then you can like fix it up yourself. Um, Right. And if, if that happens to you, please like ask me on IRC. I'm dizzy at on Freenode and OFTC, um, and or maybe Sean will help you out. Yep. SP Witten. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. That was my question. Is that it? <laughs> no other questions. Everyone's reading the man pages. <laughs> They are quite comprehensive. You could, you could disappear into those man pages. <laughs> but read, read the tutorial, don't read the, I mean, if you like reference manuals, great, if you're curious, but. Where do new upstream releases fit in? You, we only saw packaging branches in this. Uh, no, 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 Here, this is a new upstream release. Ah, okay. Right, yes, so, so um, in this diagram, uh, V1.2 is the new upstream release. Um, and what's not shown on this diagram, because it's way off to the left, is, is like, a there was a, like a V1.1. So you do, a, you do a new upstream release with Git Debris Base new upstream. Um, let me take that off. Right, so it, it, it automatically merges everything together and rebases your patch queue on top. Um, and it will automatically drop patches that 
have been merged upstream, say, they'll just vanish because Git rebase does that. Uh, if Mostly it will do that. Right. right. If it will do it, if Git, deb, if, if Git rebase will do it, then Git deb rebase will but, do it. Right, right. I'm consistently amazed by what Git rebase manages to do by itself. So it, you, you won't be typing a quilt dash n dash r to remove the thing that applies upstream, all that rubbish. That'll right. Be, and if you do have one, I mean, I had this with the Zen security updates. If you have a, a like a really complicated patch queue and you know that you need to drop these three patches because now they're in upstream and they all depend on each other. So it's merge conflicts if you don't drop them. You can just say git dev rebase new upstream dash i and now you will get an interactive rebase with the list of the, the commits in and you can just drop them there. Um, good, good. Right, so I'm expecting you all like typing frantically, trying this out. Um, we have a, a conversion tool. Uh, oh yes, yes. Uh, That's what I used on this Helm package like uh, before the point at which I started the demo basically a few weeks ago. I just typed git debris base convert from GBP because I was using GBP before and it fixed everything up. So I should mention there that it's not a good idea to not know whether what you have is a git debris base branch or a GBP PQ branch. Because if you have a GBP PQ branch, then, uh, and then you run git debris base on it, it will just throw away your patches and now you have no patches. Uh, and you'll have to dig them out of the git history again. Um, but we do have a, a command convert to GBP if you, for some reason, you tried oh, it we out. Do? And, yeah. Oh, right. I didn't know about that. Nice. Yeah, it's, 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 it doesn't make it fast forward because it can't for right. reasons, right. Um, but it does work and you can get merged dash s hours if you really want to. Right. Um, it's used by the test suite. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, well, thank you all very much and I'll let you get on with hacking. And see you at the workshop. <laughs>